Hi guys, I hope you're doing well and in this video we're going to be discussing about the relationship between the marginal cost and the average cost and also we will correspond this relationship with another relationship that is a marginal product and average product which basically means that the relationship between marginal cost and the average cost is basically linked and corresponding with the relationship with the marginal product and the average product. So basically the shapes of the marginal cost and the average cost curve are directly corresponding with the shapes of the marginal product and the average product. So let's jump straight into the video. So guys, as you guys already know, I've discussed in the previous videos as well that your marginal cost would initially be falling and after diminishing returns, that is after point X, it would be rising. So point X is telling us that a diminishing return sets in at point X and marginal cost is the lowest at your point X after which your marginal cost goes up. We've also discussed the shape of the average cost curve that it goes down and then it starts increasing and the reason why the average cost curve is this you know u-shaped is because um, what's happening is that initially marginal cost is falling which is actually putting the average cost down and marginal cost intersects the average cost curve on its lowest point and then since marginal cost exceeds the average cost uh, since each additional unit is um, you know bringing in an additional cost it, you know the additional cost contributed um, to the firm because of the production of an additional unit is is basically more than what an average unit cost so that is actually pulling your average up right so yeah guys you can clearly see that you know at this output level the marginal cost is exceeding your average cost and it is basically pulling the average cost up and at this output level your uh, marginal cost is basically less than the average cost this is the average cost this is the marginal cost which is less than the average cost it is basically pulling the average down and that is the reason why the marginal cost will always intersect the average cost at its lowest point because the simple reason is that when it cuts the average cost at its lowest point after that the marginal cost goes up and when the marginal cost goes up it becomes more than the average and then it basically pulls the average up right so yeah that's the simple reason remember that marginal cost will always cut the average cost at its lowest point so marginal cost will always cut the average cost at its lowest point and the marginal cost will also cut the average variable cost at its lowest point right so bas basically the shape of the average cost right I'll cut this bowling is not going to happen. Anyways, mo 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 moving forward. Anyways, guys, moving forward, we also discuss the shapes of the marginal cost. Uh, anyways, guys, moving forward, we also discuss the shapes of the marginal product and average product. So your marginal product initially goes up and then after diminishing return, it goes down. And your average product is also, you know, um, in, in initially increasing and then it is decreasing. So basically, the reason why um, average product is in initially increasing and then it is decreasing is because the marginal product is going up. And then basically, once your marginal product becomes less than the average product, as you can see at this point, your marginal product at this, at this output level, your marginal product is less than your average product. So it basically pulls the average down, right? And marginal product will also cut the average product at the average product's high, highest point. So guys, if you kind of, you know, analyze these two graphs, if you analyze this graph and you compare it with this graph, the both are both graphs are basically the mirror images of each other, right? They're simply the mirror images. If you just reverse or invert this graph, basically, um, it becomes the, if you basically, let's say, if you, if, if you, if you've drawn this graph, Right, if you on this graph, if you just, you know, take a mirror image or just inverse this graph, it becomes this graph. So both of them are actually the, you know, the, the concept behind it is the same. In fact, the reasons of the shapes even, you know, initially marginal product rising and then falling and then marginal product cost falling and then rising. The reasons for the shapes behind these two curves is also the same and that is just due to the law of diminishing marginal returns. So guys, if you see, um, now let's take the points um, on the marginal cost curve. Let's, first of all, let, let me just recap that the shape of the marginal cost will follow directly from the law of diminishing returns. So initially we can see that the marginal cost is falling, right? And uh, so basically if the marginal cost is falling, this will correspond to the rising portion of the marginal product. So if your marginal, okay, so if your marginal cost is basically going down till here, so this will exactly correspond with the region where your marginal product will be rising, right? So since these are just hand-drawn graphs, they're not drawn to scale, but anyways, you just need to know the concept. If your marginal cost is going down, this will correspond so this area is corresponding to this area where my margin product is rising right and then what happens is that after diminish and then also remember the fact that um, this is corresponding not only the rising portion of the margin product but it's also corresponding to the portion of the total variable cost curve that is left to the point m now now listen to this very carefully guys um, um, basically you know that you know uh, so 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 
we know that marginal cost is falling so basically marginal cost is going down and hence this is corresponding with the area where marginal cost marginal product is going up this is also corresponding to the area that is to the left of point m on the total variable cost if you can see the total variable cost graph the total variable cost is basically increasing and it is increasing and it is increasing and it is increasing but why have i have i said to the left of point m because it is increasing at a decreasing rate which means that the slope because you can see it increase then then you know the curve gets flat it gets flatter 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 the curve gets shallow so basically the slope gets shallow which means that the the total variable cost is going up at a falling rate at a decreasing at a decreasing at a decreasing rate which obviously means that the if this is going at, if total variable cost is rising at a decreasing rate your marginal cost has to go down and this obviously means that the marginal product is going up because of increasing returns to labor because the variable factors are making the best use of the fixed factors right remember specialization and product and higher labor productivity was taking place division of labor was taking place right so yeah so so basically so basically this is also the falling margin cost is also corresponding to this region um, and rising margin product is also corresponding to this region of the total variable cost which is to the left of point m right okay so moving forward then beyond a certain level of output diminishing return sets in obviously you know after point x your diminishing return basically sets in and then what happens is your marginal cost rises so after diminishing return sets in you know at point x so after point x your marginal cost would start to rise and this will correspond uh, when your marginal cost will start to rise this will correspond to the area after point b so if from so after point x you know after point x if your marginal cost is rising this is exactly corresponding to the area where your marginal product is going down right so basically, if your marginal cost is rising, your marginal product is going down. Okay, understood? Because when once diminishing return sets in, your margin product goes down because each additional unit of labor, you know, contributes um, less and less to the total product because the total, the extra output that is um, generated because of hiring an additional worker just keeps on going down, and that's what diminishing returns is all about, right? So that is why I've written that point X is basically corresponding to point B. This point X is basically corresponding to point B. So to the left of point X, you have this area, which is exactly corresponding to this area. And then to the to the right of point X, you have this rising marginal cost and you have falling marginal product, right? So yeah, you need to know these relationships, okay? Because in an exam question, there has been um, an exam question where they've asked you, to you know, um, link um, these cost curves and, and how it is linked with the marginal product and the average product. So you need to know about all of this. So um, and then and then if point X is corresponding to point B on the marginal product curve, and then it is also corresponding to the point M on the total variable cost curve. That is after point M. So basically, so basically we know that um, you know so so after if we see the total variable cost curve after point m the total variable cost curve gets steeper the total variable cost curve gets steeper so it means that a slope gets steeper which means that now that the the total variable cost is rising so tvc is going up at an increasing rate right so the, if the total variable cost is going up at an increasing rate it means marginal cost is going up and we know that all the marginal costs are variable so the change in total variable cost is basically the marginal cost right remember that okay so so which means that your total variable cost after point m is you know rising at a at an increasing rate which means that since the 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 slope of a total variable cost remember that the slope of total variable cost would be representing your marginal cost as well since all marginal costs are variable so we usually say that the slope of the total cost represents your um your um sort of uh, marginal cost by the way i've made an error here this you know, should be total cost not total variable cost so please correct that so like i've also mentioned in my previous videos as well that the slope of the total cost is basically representing marginal cost but the slope of the total variable cost is also representing marginal cost why is that and that is why i told you that the shape of the total cost curve follows exactly the shape of the total variable cost why you can you can you you, you can refer to my previous videos in the supply theory where i have mentioned this point because since fixed cost is the same so the so the change in total cost or the or the rate at which total cost would change would obviously be directly linked or dependent you know um, on the rate of the change of the total variable cost and we know that total variable cost is rising at a decreasing rate and that is why even the total cost curve is a bit flatter and after point m you know after point m we can see at this point 
even this point time is corresponding with the total cost curve at this point and we can see that after this point basically total variable cost curve also becomes steeper right so so these connect basically there's a reason why i'm telling you all these connections and there's a reason why you should have a deeper understanding of this because the more deeper understanding you have the better you can write in your paper for essay questions and the better you will be able to understand your p3 mcqs as well so that is why superficially knowing these diagrams and just you know rote learning and ratifying these well maybe you maybe you can get superficial marks but you know you won't have that confidence in the exam and whenever you will see an mcq or a question that just twist the examiner twist the question you will always panic right so um so basically remember that um, after point time beyond point time on total variable cost curve your marginal cost would be rising and marginal product would be falling so marginal cost is rising marginal product should be falling they are corresponding with each other and the simple reason is that the variable factors adds more cost then so basically each additional variable factor each additional labor cost more than it's adding to the output that is why the marginal cost is rising and the marginal product is falling and i've also mentioned this before as well just let's go through it again that additional units of output cost more and more to produce since ever increasing ever increasing amounts of extra variable cost is incurred on them so obviously whatever extra output that we are producing the marginal cost the marginal product that we are producing that marginal product is produced at a very high marginal cost right so marginal product is is basically going down and the amount of variable cost that is incurred on it is basically going up and that's what decreasing returns is all about it just messes up the entire entire thing for the firm right so a lot of extra variable cost is incurred on and that is why the marginal cost is going up so and you can also because you need to remember that you need to analyze in your p4 essay so in order to you can't just really say that marginal cost is going up you need to analyze this as well. you need to tell the examiner what this means and you could also write that if your marginal product is going down obviously if your marginal product is going down means that each additional each additional labor contributes less and less to extra output which means that marginal product is going down because the variable fact the fixed factors are becoming constrained and the variable factors are getting in each other's way so then to produce a given remember the pizza example that i gave in the initial video of the law of diminishing returns once right so 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 basically then to so if the marginal product is going down then to produce a certain given quantity in order to produce a certain given quantity of marginal product or to produce a certain given quantity of let's say extra units if i want these extra units to be produced if i want that this should be my marginal product or the extra output that this should be my given extra output then higher or ever increasing amounts of variable factors would be required or ever increasing amount of wage cost would be required that means that huge marginal cost would have to be incurred in order to produce a certain given quantity of output and that is simply the phenomena of decreasing returns to labor right but initially when the labor was specializing basically in order to produce a given output um i mean less wage cost or less amounts of variable factors were required right because there was increasing returns to labor now there's decreasing returns to labor and that's just messing things up for the firm so remember the connection uh, two things that you need to remember or take away lesson from this video is that the marginal cost cuts the average cost and the average variable cost at its remember at its lowest point so if you remember this i've also made you know drawn this in the previous video as well so if this is your if this is your uh, sorry if this is your average variable cost and you know um this is your average cost since the distance will be you know minimized as on higher levels of output since average fixed cost would be going down so marginal cost would be you know um cutting or intersecting or or or, or cutting through the average variable cost and the average cost at its lowest point also if the marginal cost is more than the average cost the average cost goes up if the marginal cost is less than the average cost the average cost goes down So that's about it guys I think I've done a fair job explaining it uh hopefully and if you have understood the video please do mention in the comments um and uh, I'll see you all around the next video where we are going to be discussing the shifts in the short run cost curves and then we'll move to the long run cost see you there guys take care bye bye